Hey everyone, Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, here live from our broadcast hub on the floor of Jenkins World. I'm joined by my friend Pete Chesner. Peter uh, is with Vericode. He's a developer, DevOps, DevSecOps evangelist. And actually, Pete and I just did we, we just did some science. Yes, we did. We uh, we did a live uh, go to webinar webinar right here at this desk, live from Jenkins World when the place was kind of packed. And uh, we don't know how that came out, but we wanted to kind of hit some of the highlights. Yes. Here today with this. So, Pete, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here. Second of all, I wanted to just quickly mention that Vericode and, and, Devo, and us at DevOps.com partnered up on a survey called the DevSecOps Global Skills Survey. And it really came, it was great. We, I don't know, we got over 400 responses and we had some very interesting, interesting uh, results, Peter. Um, let me just say from the outset, if you're looking, you'd like to get a full copy of the report, you can go to Vericode.com or come over to DevOps.com and we'll have it at the uh, in our digital download section, I'm sure. But that being said, let's talk a little bit about the survey. What we were trying to get to with this survey was, you know, are people getting the right skills coming out of schools, out of their training, to to survive and even thrive in today's, you know, IT tech environment. And Pete, there were some interesting results. Why don't you kick off some of the ones sure. you so, find interesting? So one of the things that, that was pointed out was that only 10% of the companies uh, surveyed were doing DevOps across the board. Now, you combine that with people feeling like uh, they don't have the skills to enter the workforce and they need to have them before, 65% of people said, I need to have them before I enter the workforce, yes. so I'm uncomfortable going out there and Otherwise, looking for DevOps Otherwise, how do I jobs. get a job with, without the skills? Exactly. Yeah. Well, a couple of things. Number one, I actually love that 10% number for two reasons. First of all, it's higher than numbers I've seen before, right. so it shows progress. Number two, though, like the boy in the room full of horse manure, there's got to be a pony in there somewhere. <laughs> That's true. Right? Absolutely so true. So that means there's 90% of companies yet to you know, embrace it fully. Embrace DevOps fully, and that's opportunity. That's opportunity for you, Pete, for me, and, and for everyone here at Jenkins World, certainly, right? Um, secondly, though, 65% of people do not have the skills or the training for their DevOps skills, and they're coming out into the market where they're needed. Why? Well, so, for one, colleges don't require it. So they may have security courses available. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have even degrees available in, in cybersecurity, but you don't have that mix. So what you really want is a CompuSci degree that also includes some portion of that that has to be spent in application security. Until you start enforcing that and making that part of the curriculum, how are you ever going to turn out people that are ready to go tackle a cybersecurity challenge? From the flip side, in, in the real world, out in the, uh, in the enterprises of the world, a small portion of enterprises actually pay to send their developers to go do this training, yeah. and they don't provide it to them, so developers are left to go out and figure it out on their own, which we know is not going to work. You know, as, as we spoke about on the webinar, Pete, in full disclosure, I'm a co-founder of the DevOps Institute, and we offer DevOps, DevSecOps, continuous delivery, a bunch of different courses around DevOps. And what we find is pretty interesting. Here in the States, individuals do this to, to make themselves more marketable to make themselves more valuable in the work spot, in the workplace. In Europe, and even in Asia, it seems that companies pay for their employees training like this. And as I mentioned to you before, I think it has something to do with where people are not as, uh, they don't hop around as much from job to job, it's company to company. More loyalty. Well, it goes both ways, right? It's very hard to fire someone in France, let's say. There's That's a lot true. of paperwork in France or Germany or EU, right? If you're eliminating a position or whatever. Um, where in the US, look, someone gets better skills, they don't even ask for a raise, they get another job. And so there might be some of that that you know, is due. And I also wonder whether or not the, uh, that whole pendulum of outsource, insource leads companies to maybe say, but we're not going to invest in this because we're planning on outsourcing. Outsourcing it anyway, So yeah. I wonder if you layer on top 
what the current trend is around outsourcing where they're like, well, I don't need to pay them to do it because I can get it cheaper out in Asia right. or India to go do this stuff for me. You know, it's interesting. My, my take, and, and again, I, I'm old. I've been around a long time. Is we're seeing, I, I, I think the pendulum has swung away a bit from outsourcing for yes, a lot of stuff. I'm seeing that as well. You know what? Because it's not much cheaper there anymore. Well, one of the challenges is with, a, with an outsourced agency is you don't have any control over training. You don't have any control over education. In, in a lot of places that are locked into longer term contracts with outsourcers, they can't even enforce security restrictions. They're, no. they're stuck trying to figure out how do I make them fix what they find unless I pay them extra to do it. And everything is extra. Right. Um, Let's talk about some of the other interesting studies or findings in the study, though, Pete. One of them, one of them had to do with our security, our friends in security, and that is, you know, security people need training not around security. Well, they need training around security. Sure. But not only do they need security training, but they can stand to use a little DevOps developer awareness training, if yes. you will. That's a good word. And and we don't get that either. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, uh, so I frequently talk in front of security experts as, as you do, and one of the things I ask them is, have you ever been to a, an Agile ceremony, a planning, a retrospective, uh, a stand-up even? That's, right. I mean, that's like five minutes. Can you spare five minutes out of your day? Do you understand how they build the software? Because until you do, you don't realize that, you know, doing my pen tests at the end and white knuckling the release all the way out the door is not going to get the results that I want. Yeah, agreed. It's pretty, it's, you know, it, it's it's like a, a silo that is self-perpetuating almost. And it's not that hard. I mean, if you look at uh, no. some of the recent books that have come out, the, the Phoenix Project, an excellent book for a, a, a light read that gives you an overview of what it's like to develop software. Then you go to the uh, the DevOps handbook. And again, in there, there's even a security section Such in there. The, the How should thing. you do security? That uh, Gene Kim actually wrote that chapter. Ah, so. Yes, he did. And, and again, bringing it back to DevOps Institute, we actually have a DevSecOps class we're rolling out that talks about how to do this. It's, it's written by a friend of mine, Andrew Storms, who's been in security a long, long time, and led research team, led red team, blue teams, and it, and it really talks a lot about working as part of the team. But, you know, you can lead a horse to water, Peter. You can right, make them right. drink. Listen, I don't want to rehash the entire survey here, but I wanted to point people to two things. Number one, absolutely check out the webinar that we recorded. That'll be up on DevOps TV. Uh, you can find it there. Get the report off of DevOps.com or Vericode. No notes on it, though. No <laughs> notes. No, no. Here it is. And um, and also, they should try to check you. You, you literally travel the world. I do. Talking I do. about this stuff. Tell our audience a little bit, where are you going to be next? So I'll be uh, in Europe. I'm speaking actually at uh, B-Sides Bordeaux. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm excited terrible about that place. one. I know. I'll be in Dusseldorf at Topcom. A little beer uh, there. For I'll be, well, actually, we have a, a, web, a panel here at uh, Jenkins. Yes, West. We, we will be doing the panel uh, tomorrow on DevSecOps. Joined by some, actually, Storms will be on that panel with Excellent. us. And Anders Wahlberg, CTO of... Uh, of Electric Cloud will be there, Rob Stroud of Forrester, and one other person. Oh, Curtis Yanko from Sony Type will be on. Yeah, and you, you can catch me a lot of DevOps days. I, I frequently yeah, speak, speak there. a lot of them. So between there and uh, and the InfoSec conference, Not hard to find. That's true. All right. Well, then, we're going to call it a wrap on this one. Uh, please do check out the webinar Pete and I recorded live here, though. And uh, we hope... Hope to see you here soon. Pete will Excellent. be in touch, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, everyone, this is Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, here live at Jenkins World.